Alrighty, so start of recording. And welcome. So as I said, my name is um, Simon Watson and I'm the head of department for the Creative Arts. Um, I'll give you my email address at the end as well, uh, but I'd be grateful if you could write that down. I'd be happy to field any questions you may have. Any questions that I don't feel I can answer myself, I'll flick onto the relevant teacher and they can get back to back to you pretty quickly. So welcome to the year nine into 10 subject selection chat for Creative Arts. This is what we offer at Creative Arts. Um, in the Creative Arts at Cleveland, we offer music, drama, film, dance, art, instrumental music and media. And we have a new subject that we're launching next year, which is called Arts in Practice and, and is musical theatre. I just wanted to start by talking a little generally about why we think uh, you should study the arts. So we believe that every student should study at least one art subject. And obviously, as a creative arts hub, I'm going to tell you that your, your students should study as many as they can. Um, creativity and innovation are two of the most prized attributes in the modern workforce. Research has proven that studying art subjects fosters these characteristics in a way that no other subject can. In general, countries who build creativity and innovation into their education system provide highly valued workers in all fields, as their ability to problem solve and think outside the box is greatly enhanced. An extremely high percentage of our former creative arts students have gone on to highly successful careers in all fields of study, industry and endeavour. Keep an eye out in the near future, we're going to launch some alumni videos um, explaining what they're doing now and also talking about how the arts impacted on their lives. I believe is in the arts being a very important part of a student's education all the way through to grade 12. Some more information on studying the arts. We believe the study of a creative arts subject will develop skills of creative and innovative thinking, which is a highly prized uh, skill at, in the modern workforce. The ability to challenge conventions, engage with higher order thinking, create new ideas, a logical and disciplined approach to life tasks and problem solving, a broadening of your students' horizons by becoming more aware of different societies, their artworks and their culture, an enriched understanding of Australia as a multicultural society, tolerance, respect and appreciation, and a deeper understanding of the arts through practical and theoretical avenues. And we believe that the arts being really enjoyable for the students who study it we believe it builds relationships, it creates lifelong memories, it allows students to express themselves and their emotion. It's often an escape to a safe place for artistic students, and I have many of my students say that um, about studying the arts at Cleveland. It relieves the stress students often feel in their busy school lives. All right, so I'd like to move on. That was just a general spruiking of the arts for you. I'd like to move on to what we offer now. Um, so the first subject I'd like to talk about is our brand new subject, which is Arts in Practice Musical Theatre. It's an applied subject. And as you can see there, um, exciting new subject available to students in year 10 to 12 who have an interest in musical theatre. The three disciplines covered in the program are dance, drama and music, and students will develop an understanding of a range of genres. As an applied subject, students will be offered a range of practical experiences from performance of monologue, solo song to ensemble pieces. This subject is particularly suited to students who love to perform, particularly in the musical theatre genre, and who have some experience in at least one of the above disciplines. Now for each of these um, subjects that I'm covering this afternoon, I do have the FAQ, Frequently Asked Questions, um, loaded. Just give you some time to read those. Um, in this case, it's pretty easy because there are only a couple that we've come up with so far, being a new subject. So one is, do they have to perform in front of the class? And and the answer to that is yes, but they need to, you know, your te their teacher can help them develop strategies for performance anxiety. But it is a it is obviously a subject in which performance is really at the core of the subject, and it's important that they feel okay about performing in front of others. If they've never danced, sung, acted at a high level before, um, we feel as though from years 10 to 12, their skills will develop, but it is important we think that um, there's some expertise in at least one of those three areas, dancing, singing, acting. 
and we'll try to develop the other. So that's our new subject called Arts in Practice in Musical Theatre. Very excited about offering that for next year. Uh, next up is dance, which is an ATAR subject, so the ATAR pathway. Year 10 dance introduces students to the formative characteristics of the general ATAR subject. The main intention of the Year 10 program is to explore the foundation genres of dance, jazz, ballet and contemporary dance. So they're the three categories that you'll cover. The emphasis of the curriculum in Year 10 is on developing students' choreographic performance and analytical competences that are necessary to understand the style and intention of specific genres. A lot of people don't know what dance involves. Um, performance is obviously a large part of it, but equally choreographing and also analysing dance is very important. So they'll be assessed across the three assessment instruments, chore choreography, performance and appreciation, which is analysis. And the skills developed throughout the year will culminate in a final written analytical exam and a major project developed by students for public performance. So the dance FAQ deals with things like uh, have you never danced before? And the reason I'm skimming through these, by the way, is that these are available to you as a document, so you can read through these um, and hopefully they'll help. Um, but if you've never danced before, yes, use the subject. Um, should you study it if you don't want a career in dance, definitely. It'll help you build confidence, communication, collaboration skills, etc. Is there any writing? Yes, I've already covered that. Do I need special dance clothing? You're required to wear black clothing for assessment, black leggings, t-shirt, and you can dance in sports sneakers when appropriate or bare feet. Um, how can it help you in the future? You can see there's an enormous number of um, potential occupational pathways there. Um, and that's because many, many people um, develop confidence through dance and also develop a way of working that helps in a lot of, a lot of different careers. Um, and we've, we found, for example, that dance students have gone on to be photographers even, or um, as it says there, things like writers, performers, campaign managers, etc. So there are a lot of fields available to students who study dance. Moving on to drama. Drama is a subject that explores the human experience by sharing and embodying stories, emotions and ideas through creative performance. In this course, you will learn skills in how to create, perform drama and how to analyse and evaluate drama. So you'll see a pattern there, and that is that in, um, just like in dance, drama does involve um, three core skills. Um, it's not just acting. The course will provide you with opportunities to view both live and recorded theatre, including excursions to renowned theatre companies throughout Brisbane. It requires a large amount of group collaboration, fostering the development of skills such as communication, teamwork, problem solving, all of which are transferable 21st century skills. So it is really important that your student is um, able to collaborate in a group setting, particularly in this subject. Here are some key experiences um, for drama in Year 10. Developing an original show from scratch all the way from uh, to performance for an audience. Meet and greet opportunities, Q&A sessions, acting workshops, developing skills, excursions to the theatre to view live performance, always a massive highlight for the students. Both group and individual acting tasks and performances for assessment and learning about a range of performance styles from traditional dramatic forms to more contemporary forms of drama. I'll quickly skim through the drama FAQ. So if I just pass year nine drama, do you think I'll pass year 10 drama? Um, if, if you were on a low C, year 10 is certainly much, um, much more rigorous. And so we believe that if, if the student was on a low C and they work to the best of their ability, it may be hard to pass year 10. Uh, what do you do in Year 10 Drama? We've covered um, quite a bit of this, but Semester 1 has a large focus on the elements of drama and they do performing and acting. And then the academic rigour increases in Semester 2 as the assessment starts to mirror that of the senior syllabus and unseen exam at the end of Term 3. Term 4 is the beginning of year, Unit 1 share which serves as preparation for year 11. So this is a pretty common uh, thing across the school and that is that um, essentially you start unit one for year 11 at the end of year 10. 
in term four. And that's just so that we have enough time to get through all the content, etc. So some more um, frequently asked questions. Do I need to be good at English? Yes, a large portion of assessment relies heavily on your communication skills, both written and verbal, and obviously you need to be able to read well, scripts, etc. but you need to be able to write well in both ways when creating drama, but also when analysing and evaluating it. Is it good for confidence building? A mass yes. Drama, I think, is one of the best subjects in terms of developing confidence in students. Um, you do need to come in with a level of confidence to be able to perform in front of an audience. And then there are some careers listed at the end of that um, frequently asked questions. Actor, director, working in a theatre company, creator, producer, theatre maker, playwright, dramaturg, drama teacher, etc. Um, but a lot of what you get out of drama if you don't end up following a drama career per se is very transferable teamwork creativity understanding people having empathy which is really important communication um, the ability to communicate well flexible thinking etc all right so that's drama i'd like to move on to film tv and new media which again is an atar subject in film, television, new media at Cleveland High, students will individually and collaboratively make and respond to moving image media. The making strand of assessment involves students planning, storyboarding, filming and editing their own concepts. The responding strand involves students writing in response to a variety of moving media pro products. In year 10, students study vlogging, interactive media and trailers. In 11 and 12, they study music videos, short, short genre films, multi-platform media, documentary film and auteur theory. By studying film, students will develop highly transferable skills such as flexible thinking, work-related creativity, collaboration and communication. And I'm sure you're impressed that I could read that down the bottom there. Um, again, people often think that film is just either wandering around with a camera or editing, but there is, again, more to, uh, as an ATAR subject, there's more rigour uh, than that, the storyboarding process is quite significant, um, and your your um, responding strand is is quite challenging too. Um, is FTNM a practical or theoretical subject? So I just talked about this pretty much, uh, but strong written communication skills are required. Yes, you get to make awesome films and edit them, uh, but there is more to it than that. How will it help me in, in the future? It's suited to students who are interested in pathways beyond school lead to tertiary studies, vocational education or work. We actually have a number of students who've gone on to study film and who work in film now, which is really exciting. But we also believe that a lot of those skills and practical abilities transfer well to other subjects. And here's an FAQ for you. So what career might I pursue after studying it? And there's just a few more examples there. You can peruse those at your leisure um, when you get the other document. All right, so that's film. Moving on to media arts in practice, which is an applied subject. So it's on the applied pathway. And media arts in practice, I think, is one of those subjects that not many people know much about or understand. So hopefully this will help a little bit. Media arts in practice is a computer-based subject. Students will predominantly use a computer lab supplied and will experience graphic design, photography, animation, game design, video and audio editing, and web development. So you can see there that it crosses over a little bit with art and it crosses over a little bit with uh, IDT, etc. Um, communicate, you know, computer technologies, etc., uh, IT, etc. Um, but it is a unique subject in its own right. This subject suits students with an aptitude for artistic computer work, those who are capable of a reasonable level of autonomy over their own work. Um, because so many things are project based in the subject, it is important that they have a reasonable level of autonomy and independence. There's a written component to each task but the written work is appropriate for an applied subject and media arts in practice offers the opportunity to create media artworks in many forms. There's a bit of an FAQ. So firstly, what do you do in media? It covers photography, graphic design, animation, game creation, web development, video, audio, editing and more. What is the career um, path for this subject? I sincerely believe that 
um, media arts in practice gives you skills you can use in many, many career uh, paths. But specific career paths might include photographer, animator, graphic design, game developer, web developer, video audio editor, technician, and, and many more. Do I have to be good with computers? This is a really crucial question. It is, it is really important that your student is comfortable with computers, um, specifically if they're great at the Adobe suite and um, things like that, that would be uh, perfect. Um, but it is, it is important that they are good with computers because a large part of the time is spent working on a computer. And is there written work? Yes, there is, but it's uh, manageable. What attributes do I need to study media? A keen interest in digital art forms would help. Prior knowledge of the programs mentioned there um, would, would be good, but not absolutely necessary. And working independently, staying focused, as I said, is really important. It's an applied subject. Remember, you can do up to two applied subjects, still get an ATAR result. So this could be a perfect way for your student to express themselves, but also to not quite have the same level of written um, written work, etc. And so perhaps find it a little easier. Do they need to bring equipment? Computers are supplied, you'll need to bring headphones, earphones, and a USB stick. Um, okay, moving on to music which is an ATAR subject, and we all also offer music in practice, which is an applied subject. I'm really pleased to be able to announce that um, this year, well, the year coming, I should say, 2021, we're able to offer music and music in practice on separate lines. And I'm excited about this as the head of department, but also as a musician myself, because it means that students who are really keen musicians can choose both. They can choose to study ATAR music and they can also study applied music. They can do a lot of playing. Uh, when they get to year 12, they can um, drop another line of music extension and then a large part of their time here could be experiencing music, writing music and listening to music, which is fantastic. So I'm really excited to announce that that's uh, happening as of next year. Music and music in practice are creative, practical subjects that encourage students to explore and understand music more fully whilst developing their own skills as musicians. Students develop skills in playing and composing music as well as responding and listening to a range of different music styles. Students also learn how to read music and use music technology to compose, perform and record music. Studying music develops creative thinking and encourages students to express themselves through music with confidence. In studying music, students are developing long skills which enhance their future quality of life. So obviously one of the key questions we always get um, regarding the ATAR versus the applied subject is what's the difference? So music being a general or uh, a general subject that, that contributes to an ATAR has more academic rigor and written components than music in practice. General music students will explore a wide range of contemporary historical cultural music styles, while music and practice students will focus more on contemporary music industry practices. So in other words, you can expect to experience a, a broader range of styles, uh, classical, et cetera, in music, whereas music and practice is, is really popular music, contemporary music practices, et cetera. Both subjects do require students to compose, perform and respond to music, but again, the level that the students experience is, is maybe a little different. That's not to say that students can't be challenged in music in practice because the teachers are just as highly qualified, um, but the expectation is, is not quite as high in terms of academic rigor, etc. Do I need to play an instrument to do music or music in practice? We recommend that students doing general music are already competent on a musical instrument, you'll find that most students are in year 10 who choose music. Beginner musicians are welcome to study music and practice will be taught guitar or keyboard as part of their studies. Is voice considered an instrument? Yes, you may complete all your performance activities or assessments in either course as a singer. Your teacher may ask you to do some work on the piano or on a guitar just to build those skills, uh, but you can be assessed on voice alone. Some more FAQ, I don't read music, can I still study music? Yes, we teach the basics of note reading in year nine to all music and music and practice students. You'll be enrolled in an online software program for which there is a resource fee uh, to help you develop your note reading skills. 
If you are starting the study of music in year 10 and cannot yet read music, it's recommended you enrol in music in practice rather than general music. You'll, you'll still get through in general music, but you will have more work to do to catch up. Um, do students have to perform in front of the class? Um, for students who are particularly anxious, we can accommodate that in years 9 and 10 with some students recording their performances or performing in front of the teacher and a few selected peers. You will be expected to eventually perform in front of an audience. Um, one of the reasons you become a musician is to communicate emotion, etc. And so, yes, you will be expected long term to perform in front of an audience, but initially we can help you work through performance anxiety, etc. Alrighty, we're, we're nearing the end and that means we're up to visual art, which is an ATAR subject, and visual arts in practice, which is an applied subject. So the visual arts subjects will both expand on the skills learned in year nine, as well as refining and expanding on the individual student's technique and own artistic identity. Visual art will involve a combination of practical and theory-based tasks. These could include analysing artworks and influences of artists and researching various artworks and techniques. Students will also learn different art techniques involving practical activities and reflecting on their own individual style. Visual arts in practice will also include some similar theory but is a more practical hands-on subject. I'm sure you're seeing a pattern there with the ATAR versus applied subjects. Both subjects will focus on art techniques such as ceramics, drawing, painting and textiles. So again, a very similar question to start in the FAQ for these subjects, and that is, what is the difference? And you've probably guessed, but visual arts and practice is a subject with a good balance of both practical and theory work. Students have enough time to complete all learning of the subject in class as a general rule. Teachers work with students to guide their learning in relation to painting, textiles, printmaking, photography, sculpture, and drawing. Visual art, on the other hand, requires students to take artworks home to finish for students to work on written tasks at home as well. Students taking visual arts should be independent learners, should enjoy reading, writing and creating. Students should be achieving at least a C in English to choose visual art as a subject. What do you do in Year 10 Visual Art? It focuses on practical and theory. Through, throughout the year, you'll develop drawing skills and use a variety of different media, including ink, watercolour, acrylic, paint and clay, to name a few. You'll complete a folio of experimental and resolve work each semester alongside a written essay, presentation and an internal exam. Again, it's just gone off the page. Apologies for that. What do you do in visual arts in practice? It focuses on the practical application of the arts. During the year, we experiment with a broad range of techniques, including painting, drawing, textiles, photography. In the Cultural Kaleidoscopes unit, we investigate and discover different cultures and how art is reflected in their identity. We also reflect on our own artworks and learn various skills analysing art making techniques. So you can see there, again, just like media arts in practice and music in practice, there is a written component and it's very important that the students do well in that written component, but the level of academic rigour is not as high, um, so it's more manageable if your student struggles in that area. Do I need to be good at English to do well in Year 10 Visual Art? You should be doing at least C. And you can see some more information there. Um, when you make work in the subject, you're required to reflect and think about your making process in writing. And what careers can come out of studying visual art? Well, there are an enormous amount, as you can see, from art director, visual arts, or graphic designers, curators, architects, journalists, photojournalists, etc. So there are an enormous amount of careers that you can pursue if you're keen on visual arts. It develops your creative thinking practices and processes, and these skills are applicable across many industries and jobs, not just within the arts industry. And let's move on to the next thing. So I wanted to talk about uh, prerequisites now. Um, so general subjects, which lead to, uh, towards the ATAR pathway, require you to study general English. In dance, we recommend at least a C, the same with drama. In film, television, new media, the, it may surprise people to hear, but there is, there is a 
more stringent amount of writing and probably slightly more rigorous writing. And so we require at least a B uh, in English, general English for you to do film. Uh, in music, at least a C, visual art, at least a C. And music extension is offered in year 12 and it's invitation only. In to apply for uh, music extension, you would need good results in general English, but you would also need to be doing well in music, obviously. Prerequisites for applied subjects. Essential English is suitable for applied subjects. No prior practical experience is required. Remember that you can now mix general and applied subjects. So that's a really important point, um, that students now have the freedom to, to choose a little more flexibly and still stay on an ATAR pathway if that's what they choose. So our four um, applied subjects are listed there. Arts in practice, which is musical theatre, visual arts in practice, music in practice, and media arts in practice. Some final thoughts. What do you need to do a creative arts subject? We believe you need a high level of motivation. You need autonomy, the ability to work independently. You need the ability to work in groups, particularly in dance, drama, film, and music. In all four of those subjects, you have to work in groups. Dance is quite obvious. Drama, you work in ensembles. Film, you have to film and edit and um, you know produce, direct, etc., all as a group. So it is important that you work well in a group if you choose that subject. And obviously, music, you play in ensembles, etc. In general, music. Um, already experienced on an instrumental voice as covered earlier, and an ability to think flexibly and creative, creatively. All right, so that's my very brief, and I've managed to sneak it in uh, under half an hour. That's my very brief um, description of what we offer here at Cleveland in terms of the creative arts. I'm very keen to hear from any anyone who would like some more information about any of these subjects. So please note down my email address there if you haven't already, swats176 at eq.edu.au. We're incredibly passionate about the arts here at Cleveland and it's a very important part of our school and we would love to think that your student could find at least one arts to, to take part in in year 10, 11 and 12. We think it will fulfil them and will give them great skills and give them a lifetime of memories as well. Thank you very much for listening to my presentation today. And uh, again, if you have any questions, please feel free to get in touch. Thank you, everyone. The recording will stop now. <laughs>